What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. I'm out here in Miami. You know, we usually spend our Christmas seasons in other places with better weather. And I haven't even been in Miami since I think like close to the summertime or something like that. But you know, it's beautiful out here. The weather is great. 80 degrees out here today. And uh, I think it's like 75 or something like that. So the sun is setting. I've been really grinding all day. Uh, I haven't really got out, but it is about six o'clock. So we are about to hit the streets. Streets, man. Probably do a little bit more shopping. I did a lot of shopping when I first got here. And then, you know, we had Christmas. You know what's so weird? Yesterday we was out for Christmas, right? And so we hit Miami Beach and we walked around and we chilled before I eventually came back in a live stream with Q. And I realized, which I already know, but it just confirmed to me, this place is just completely different, man. I mean, this place is so much different than anywhere else. I mean, it's different from New York, Los Angeles. It's different from uh, anywhere over in Texas. It's a crazy dynamic. I mean, I can't think of any place that I've ever visited that is uniquely this. It's like, because it's always on and you can't really turn it off. And even on Christmas, it was a whole lot of people out. Most places was open, especially on Miami Beach and up and down Miami on Biscayne. I didn't even head over to Brickle, but everything was still open, popping, restaurants, shows, and people was out and about. And it was just like, I know that back home, and I know in most places, because it was Christmas yesterday, that nothing was happening and it was dead. And so that's one of the things that I kind of, that kind of bothers me. Not that everything was open because I love that everything was open. And I like that everything was open uh, when I stayed down here for the pandemic. And Miami is like a second home to me. But I don't think that I can make this place my permanent spot, my permanent place that I would ever live in because you can't turn it off. I mean, you can make the argument and say, well, you know, you can go and live in a spot where there isn't a lot going on and then you can go over to Miami. That's not how my life is built up. How my life is tried, I set my life up and that's one of the reasons why I got a spot in downtown Detroit now. And I'll, I can't imagine myself ever leaving Detroit permanently and all, I'm always gonna have an office there. I'm always gonna have a home there as far as I know. I'm never gonna say never. But I like to live, work and play all in the same spot. All in the same spot. I don't like to uh, be in the suburbs for an extended period of time. I like to live, work, and play in the same spot, but at the same time, it's like, this place is like on, it's like New York with better weather on steroids. That's basically how it is. Let me give you a couple of other reasons uh, of why I probably would never permanently live here, but I absolutely love it here. This is not real life. It's dreamy as hell though, right? So you'll think here coming to visit, like, oh my God, I would love to move here. And most of the people that come here to visit, First place they go and hit is Miami Beach. And so you walking across the beach and you see all of the nice cars and everybody got G-Wagons and G63s and Mercedes and you can see the, the Porsche right there, right? And walking over in a design district and the weather is incredible and all of that, right? And so it seems like the ideal place to be. And it can be if you have a lot of resources but for regular, most regular people, I consider myself a regular person just like you, right? But for most regular people, this is not real, man. This is not real life. This is not something that most people can truly afford. And the people that's really from Miami, they don't go to the beach every day. And they not hanging out down here in the design district. And they not going shopping every day and spending, you know, one and $2,000 per item. This is, this is not real life. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is a place to visit, you know, it's, it's like the, the American version of going to Paris and going to whatever it is that they shop at mostly there, right? And so you go in and you can see, and you know, I'm blessed, I'm thankful. I can afford a lot of this, right? And you know, I do a lot of shopping over here and I spend a lot of time over here, but this ain't real, you know what I'm saying? And so one of the things for me is that I like to be immersed with real people in real life. And even when I come down here, okay, so yeah, I spent some time in a design district and you be over in Brickle and you stay in the nice places and you got the nice views and all of that. But in most instances, when I'm down here, I spend the majority of my time in spaces where most of the locals are and they not on the beach. 
yeah, I visit the beach and I, I do think that you need to be a tourist in your own city, but very rarely are people actually out and about and doing the things that tourists do. Now, I do think that people that live here need to be more touristy and that a lot of them don't even understand the culture that's in their own city. They don't even know. Most people that stay in their own cities, not just Miami, but in general, most people have no idea where to go, what to do. But then that also gives them a sense of normalcy in that they can come out and they can participate and they can play. And it just, you know, when you tap in with them, you can find out exactly what they do instead of what all of the touristy spots are, like right? what's on TikTok, right? And so I also like to immerse myself in a real life culture and not in what just the people that visit or the people that have money do. And so you need that balance, right? Because you'll be disconnected and you'll be so far removed from what's real that you'll start to think that this is real life. This is not real life. And people get caught up in that. They go and visit a place and then they think that, oh, okay, Rita and them is in there shopping right now in Louis Vuitton. I can see her and Anna. They'll go, they'll go and visit and they'll be like, oh, okay, this is where I want to live for the rest of my life. Well, you got to generate a lot of money. Do you know what the real estate market hit here is? It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. If you want to live in a space where everybody is really living, right, you're going to have to spend a lot of money to be here, which means you're going to have to make a lot of money. Now, that can be expire, uh, inspiring or it can be defeating but most of y'all got to go home and you're going to have to learn that balance. And I'm okay with going home, right? I'm okay with being a relatively normal person and I'm cool. I'm cool with being a man in my own city. I'm going to bring the things that I learned from the places that I visit and I'm going to bring that back to where it is that I'm from and I'm going to bring that culture. I'm looking to bring some of the, the architectural designs that I learned in, in Texas and Dallas and you know some of the, the luxury items and the inspiration that I learned here in Miami but I'm also realistic in understanding that I also want to have a place that I want to raise my daughter. This is not a place to raise children. This is not a place to raise a family. This is a place that you go when you have money and you retire. A lot of the locals is moving out. What if you just want to be a regular person? What if you just want to relax? What if you just want to go to the store without having to worry about dressing up and being on point? Now, I will say that that could be a good thing in that a lot of people really don't put as much effort as they should into being outside. But if you out here, you're going to be outside. And so that's good. But at the same time, like I said, this is not the place that you go to in order to make. Listen, if you make under $100,000 a year, a lot of people like to talk about and complain about some of these TikTok videos where they ask women or they ask guys, hey, how much it costs to raise a family in somewhere or wherever like that. And then they'd be like, hey, if you want to live in Miami, then you need to make $100,000 a year or whatever. And then I'll see a lot of people in the comments because, you know, we like to go into the comments and see what the general sentiment of the people is. And you go into the comments and people are like, oh, they out of, you know, they out of touch or whatever. No, I think that they're not necessarily out of touch. I think they're out of touch with what it is that they can expect to get from a guy living in certain spaces but they're not out of touch with the reality based off of where you are at that particular moment, right? If you living in Manhattan, if you living here in Miami, if you over in Calabasas, if you in certain areas, then it's going to take that. It is going to, and to, a, to an extent, it pushes you, right? You you wanna be better, you put more effort, you, you, you become a part of a hustler culture. Like I remember growing up, over in New York, they say, yo, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. It's the environment that pushes you. But if you're looking for a slower pace of life, then maybe you can find spaces outside of here, but it's not necessarily going to be um, the same as moving to the suburbs of wherever you wherever you at, right? Living in the suburbs of Chicago or even down in Tennessee, somewhere in Nashville or, um, you know, just a regular normal outside of Houston, right? Houston is, is like the new Atlanta, but it's nothing like Miami inside of the United States of America, nothing. And then you just a hop, skip and a jump away from Tampa. And then Tampa is a hop, skip and a jump away from Orlando. And then you got the keys. So it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's like, it could be a paradise, but for a lot of people that live here that are locals, 
I think that a lot of them are experiencing gentrification and that they're being moved out because people that have money are moving here and the people that don't have money or that's just regular everyday people that may be native to the area, they're being pushed further north. And so then they got to go up to Jacksonville. Then they got to move further up towards Atlanta where the weather is not as good. It's not going to be 80 degrees on December 26th up there. But it is. This place is uh, it's paradise for people that got money. And it could be a nightmare for the people that's trying to keep up. So I guess the learned lesson here is don't try to bite off more than you can chew. And, you know, visit, have fun, readjust, learn, and then move forward from there. But don't try to make something out of it that is not because it'll it'll absolutely it could either push you to be greater or it could absolutely ruin your perspective on life. And even people that come here or they be here for a while, they think that they go back home and they think that that's the expectation moving forward. It's not. It's not. So I love it here and I'm a regularly visit. But I also love home because it gives me a sense of what, what reality is and I like the growth that comes along with my own city. All right, so I love you guys. I appreciate you. Let me know what y'all think in the comments if you've ever actually spent, spent a lot of time here, not maybe just visited, but you know, I'm looking at G-Wagons and Urises and, and Land Rovers and uh, just a Corvette is like a normal car here. Like the new Corvettes, those is like, that's like a normal car. It's almost like a family car. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. If you've ever spent a lot of time here, let me know what y'all think. Keep me in a keep me in the in the loop of you know how you see things and whether or not you think that this is a realistic place for people to come and settle down. I know a lot of people want to move here, but very few people really understand what it takes in order to be here. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm gonna holler at you later. Peace.